Bernard Middleton says, I do not know whose idea the zigzag was when it came into use at the end of the 19th century, but Douglas Cockerell certainly did much to popularise it. His main concern was being to provide a way of eliminating drag on the fly leaves. This is the diagram from Cockerell's book Binding and the Care of Books in 1901, showing this gusset marked with the D, which expands as the boards are opened up. You can see it on this book. It just opens up slightly as the board is opened up, reducing the drag on the end paper. When I first started experimenting with this end paper, I was intrigued by this figure that shows the gusset extending well past the shoulder. And I couldn't find anything else about this, so I experimented with it, and, and here's an example where I've made the gusset ex go well beyond the shoulder, and I was surprised that the gusset didn't really open up any more than with an, a shallow gusset. You can just see it. So, but I also don't like the look of that gusset ex extending up onto the first free fly leaf. So I've decided to always keep that gusset about the same depth as the shoulder. Cockerel recommends one eighth of an inch, and that's pretty much what I've always stuck to, and most of the other authors recommend as well. So I start by folding the two coloreds. Uh, and two whites, uh, another white which I'll, I'll tear and it's going to be used for uh, the waste sheets and I'll need another two whites but I'll, I'll do those later when I need them. So I set my dividers for three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. I'll prick both the coloured and the white. Um, the coloured is a fair bit taller than the book, well maybe 10 mil and the white is uh, wider than the text block because uh, some of the widths is going to be used up by forming that gusset. I score the line uh, on the white which makes it easier to fold later. It's also a nice line for pitching to when gluing the white and the colour together. I like to put adhesive on both the coloured and the white to ensure a really good connection between the two sheets. I'm using straight PVA just to speed up the process. My preferred adhesive is a 50-50 mix of paste and PVA. simply a matter of turning the folios around so they're spine to spine and overlapping them by that uh, three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. Put them between a couple of pressing boards to let the adhesive dry. Lawrence Town stresses not getting excess adhesive uh, on the end papers by putting down waste when you're uh, gluing the two sheets together. Obviously I completely ignore his advice in this video.
The next step is to fold the white that's adhered to the coloured around the coloured, which becomes the waste sheet. So this side. Now it's time to form the gusset. So the crease mark makes this a lot easier. You sort of uh, roll the paper towards that crease mark. You can even reinforce it a little bit um, with your bone folder. As I said, you just roll the paper over towards the crease. And now you can see the gusset that's been formed, which corresponds to the D from Cockerell's diagram. At this point, Cockerell would have you insert another white folio into the end papers and the job would be done. However, when I first started using these end papers, I kept um, gluing the gusset closed when I was uh, backing the book. I asked a lot of people about this and most people said to just make sure that you clean out the gusset every time you are applying adhesive to the spine. But Ted Chapman came up with the idea of tipping a waste around the entire end sheet assembly. And I later found this same suggestion in Lawrence Town's book, Bookbinding by Hand. And that's what I do. Since this process isn't a standard one that's uh, mentioned in many of the books, what I'm doing is tipping on a second waste sheet to go around the whole end, end paper assembly to protect the gusset while I'm backing the book. To finish the construction of the end papers, you just insert a single folio of white between the colour and the white. Uh, before I insert those folios, I'm just going to trim the colours to length.
And to finish up, I'll demonstrate sewing the end papers to the text block uh, greatly sped up. If you want to see this process uh, in slower motion or in more, more detail, I'd recommend the video on made end papers.